Um, good for now, thanks. Uh, that looked like 10 ish. Yep, somewhere that looks there. great. Somewhere there. I have to touch with the jobs because I can't tell if I'm in front of it or behind it when I. Somewhere there. Yep. Yeah, that looks great. There we go. Perfect. Okay, you can zoom back in if you want a little bit. So got little uh, like things at the end of those tentacles. Yeah. Oh yeah, muted. Yes. Is it retracting? That they look shorter than before. Yeah, they do. They they usually cannot retract the tentacles completely. Mm -hmm. They it's like sort of a muscular cell, so they can extend Ex them yeah. a little bit, but not, they cannot be retracted inside. I think they know we're here. Yeah, they're <laughs> disturbed because they're highly sensory. It may each, have, yeah, yeah, each of those tentacles have the filaments extending from it, mm -hmm. which makes them highly sensitive. Yeah, maybe they're thicker because they've been, it's shortened, it's bunched up and then um, shortened. Yeah, they'll actually compress yeah. the benthic ones. And it is eating the, the coral, or is this a bird? No, 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 okay. No. They are getting, uh, they're just using the coral for getting advantage of Delta. hide. They are basically catching What's food that? from the Charlie water. Charlie or Delta? Uh, okay. One moment while, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know if Dan needs to concentrate. Yep. No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> the vehicle's static, so. Roger. Fill your bits. Okay. Yeah. Vehicle static, boat static. All I gotta do is put something in a box here. Uh, which one did you say again? Uh, C or D, as in dog. That's the back to it? Yep. Yes. Right it. Uh, can you open a little more? Box should open that's just a little bit more. That's that's max. Really? Yep. Why is the nip not going to the right anymore? Oh, oh. oh. Well, that's okay. It can go in with the rock. <laughs> it is now in B. All right. I'll take note of that. Uh, there's just a rock in there, so that's totally fine. Not sure what happened there. Uh, I wonder if I still have any of it in the jaw. No, uh, I think that's the jaw, yeah. I think it popped out of the... Uh, interesting. Okay. okay, close it, close it. Um, so that is sample number 085. Thank you, Taylor Ann. You're welcome. Who's the guy in the Marvel movies with all the arms? The little arms? All the arms. Oh, Doc, Doc, Doc Ock. Ock. What's that? Doc Ock. Oh, um, yeah. Spider Man number two, the yeah. uh, Nemesis. Yeah. yeah. The little things at the end when she was zoomed in reminds me of <laughs> What do you mean? The manipulator reminds you. That's literally what it is. No, what he his, had on his, his back. arms move like, like the tentacles, right? It's got inf yeah. infinite degrees of freedom. Very creepy. Sorry for that. Off the rails there. <laughs> Well, Pashana, there's a question if you have time. Yes. Um, there, so if it's not feeding on it, not it's just off. a question of why the polyps look uh, a bit thinner 
in that yeah. area. Yeah, so good question. I have the same question. <laughs> <laughs> so they are, these in? are flattened jelly-like structure, right? So when uh, so they are, uh, so when they're sitting on the polyps, they are kind of squishing the polyps, and because the polyps there are not able to get any nutrition, so they are becoming more retracted, probably. And I mean, because of their position, obviously the polyps are not happy. So we don't see the healthy polyps around that region, but they don't, they cannot directly feed on them. So on those tentacles, there can be multiple of them actually there, given the length that they are occupying. There can be two penthetinophores that are there. Uh, so the tentacles, so for a long That's time, nice. the tenophores were considered to be nidarians. Uh, but in the, in the last 10 years, they have been put in a different phylum of their own. So they have, they don't have the nidae or the stinging cells like the nidarians, but they have what is called the coloblast cells on the tentacles, which are fired like the nidarians, but they are like sticking cells. So they get fired whenever they are disturbed and they stick onto the prey and food and, that, and then they are moved along the tentacles towards the mouth. So they don't have... They won't be feeding directly on the polyps, but the polyps of that part of the coral are definitely highly disturbed. So we are seeing and are compressed by the tenophores. So they, are, they don't look healthy and there'll be sparse uh, polyps there because probably some of them died and fell off or something happened. Mm -hmm. So th it wouldn't be accurate to call it a parasite, right? No. But it has a negative effect on yeah, the... Yeah, on that part. Okay. They're just using the... Uh, and you can also say that there's a, so they are using the bamboo coral to gain height above the seafloor and catch waters in the water column. And also you can say that they are providing some kind of a defense mechanism to the coral so that they are not predated upon by maybe mice or something else. Okay. Generally. So Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Very interesting. So we're good here? Mm -hmm. Ready to yeah, go? Good. Thank you, Dan. Thank Our you. pleasure. Okay, you can uh, go ahead. Yeah, given the number of tentacles, I'm quite sure that there are more uh, than one. Get one quick zoom on the on the very end there, while we uh, record our gauges here. Yeah, yeah there's a squat lobster, and kind of feels that the top has been broken off by something, or somehow it has lost the polyps more towards the tip. But we have a beautiful squat lobster, probably in the family Munodopsidae. Definitely a Cairo styled. A small one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you. Are you all good on the yep. gauges there? Thank you. Thank you. you. Okay, I can go ahead. Thank you. So having taken a sample, it's probably uh, an appropriate moment to point out something that we're all aware of in the van, that we're in a very special location in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, which is a sacred place to Native Hawaiians. And so all of the samples here are of a sacred nature as well as of scientific value. The marine species, even the water samples, even the rocks are considered sacred. This is a place of origin and a place of return for the Hawaiian people. So we're very aware of that and want to note that uh, we take as much care as possible with the samples that will provide us with information to understand and care for this place. And in uh, connection to that, or rather an extension, extension to that, I hope that this practice of respecting the place where from where 
places that we are exploring and getting and collecting samples from is extended uh, beyond this protected area okay. and this is a, something that we practice for uh, any habitat either. or community that we visit and we study and we sample I think we practice that respect and reverence for every place and that we learn from this practice that is prevalent here and extended to every other place. Absolutely. The amazing thing about this expedition is it's a voyage in partnership with, you know, Western science, so to speak, and with indigenous science. Exactly. And it's really amazing to see those two perspectives come together in a common understanding of what is a very special location. Absolutely. Thanks for that, Hans and Upashna, and I appreciate all of you on this watch for being so respectful of our land, and I respect you guys for being so respectful, so thank you. You're welcome. That would be uh, one of those neon green bolosomas that we are seeing along with the uh, polyopogon sponges around it, and there's a sea star on a bamboo whip. in a bit there if you want to good thanks that's a nice spot of color yeah what's that green thing i see i think we saw it before Oh, on the sea star? Yeah. We, we, if possible, if we can get a zoom on it. Yeah, give me a second here. Yes, put absolutely. A toe out somewhere. It's always funny to watch the sea stars feeding in the most uncomfortable <laughs> positions. <laughs> it kind of looks like it's super tired. Like, if yeah. you ever had a long day and you get, come back and you're just like on your bed, flopped. You need a wider bed. <laughs> it looks like there's one uh, below it too. It's kind of tucked in that elbow. Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. Is there something on it? Mm -hmm. Something green. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a parasite, probably some yeah. type of. Yeah, but I, I've seen pictures of it in the ID guide looking at these um, sea stars. Okay, you can push in on the green blob. Uh, I didn't have the camera racked all the way out, sorry. It'd be cool if there were links to uh, and from the um, parasites, yeah. like in the images. In the images exactly. If there was links to the associates as well, I and am the guide. not sure what this is because it doesn't look like any of the chitons. Doesn't look like an an, an anilida. Yeah, yep. it's definitely been observed before, though. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's been studied or not, but Can yeah, those are great images. Uh, yes, thank you so much. For the shard, I'm. Um, we'll try and ID it. Thank you. Our pleasure. I'll be stepping away too, yes. but yes. here's the still cam. Okay. Thanks now Hans. I have. Res I have the power. Of <laughs> <laughs> I think Jenny said, "Take a lot of photos." Yeah. I think that's what she wanted. I'll use my power completely. Go crazy. Sorry, Jaina. <laughs>
So just hopping back on here um, in between. Let's try a try up move. Uh, sorry. No uh, worries. I was just going to ask, are you ready for another move? Yeah, let's do a 225. OK, 20. Yes, please. 225. Come back to your right a little bit for me, Jacob. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. You can look left now. I was just using your uh, sonar to for reality check there. Gotcha. Um, so just jumping back here in between our classroom calls, um, and um, is this a good time that we can ask a question from the chat? Yeah, we're good up here. I know we're kind of close now to the wall, so just let us know when you're in a good position that we can um, address any of the questions that our viewers have. Yeah, I'm in a good spot. We're kind of moving the vessel, so I'm not really close. It's, uh, the density is not, you know, there's not big things sticking out in that camera. So <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard to tell from back there, but we're all good. Thank you for asking. Okay, great. Um, so, and I know, Pasha, you, you're busy too, but if you have time for a question, um, the question is, is parasitism... Um, very common in the deep because there's just not that much food, right? So is this a common thing? Because we were, were we just looking at a parasitic react, uh, interaction as a way from the computer for a bit, so. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say that parasitism is more common in the deep sea than in the shallower habitats. We do encounter some degree of parasitism, but not a lot, honestly. Uh, it it is present. It is there, uh, but not. We don't see more than we would see somewhere else. Uh, we see sometimes the parasitic uh, worms, the annelids associated with various corals. Sometimes there are there are some that can bore into the coral tissue and live there. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say ex that it's exceptionally higher in the deep sea bit due to the lack of food, which is very interesting also. Roger. Thank you. Well, thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. But that's also an interesting question, you know. Yeah, it is. Down five for me, please. Oh my gosh, my bad. I was going out. Oh, it's one of the genres. China crops. Yeah, the Jonas, I can't pronounce the yeah. family name. Jonas, uh, Jonas, uh, I'm bad at this. Jonas, you have to come, come down, come down a little fast. China crops, right? China crops is the genus, oh, the okay. family, because the Chonax and the China crops can look very similar. Oh, okay. China crops city. Down five. Right. Okay, you can uh, zoom in there. We will have a... Oh, uh, this looks like a bamboo coral fan with a nodal branching, right? Yes, I can see yeah. a node um, where it's branching right there. Great. Thank Sorry, I can't you. circle too far. No, 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 that's fine. Yeah, I, I think it's a nodal branching as well. Thank you so much. And we have some mycids uh, feeding off close to the polyps. Are you full zoom there? 
Yeah, full zoom. Right. It. Okay, can go in. We'll go. Let's see if we can have a look fish. at the fish. Yeah. yeah. He's right there. They don't go too far. Let's see if I can find a good spot to sneak in there. In and look at. We can have a look at the fish. Just gotta look around here and see if there's a spot I can get in without uh, mowing over. Yeah. Fishes. I would say that was a polychaete. Yeah. So I think what we were seeing on the goniastrid was a, a polychaete or worm. Okay. Um, I'm trying to look it up right now. I see a blog post about it. Um, okay. But it didn't look like it had the. Apparently, it, it's been yeah, observed that they've crawled around, like, yeah, around the surface, so I'm not bears. sure. Um, yeah, here in the images, they definitely look like polychaetes. Mm -hmm. Given the color, just the angle, we probably didn't see the... Uh, sorry, I was completely mispronouncing the family. It is Chonacidae. That's why I, my <laughs> oh. I was adding an OP in between. No worries. Apologies for that. I'm going to push in there a bit. Yeah. Where'd he go? This one? There's something over there. It looks like a mushroom coral, maybe. <laughs> I think. I can't tell. It might be an anemone, but oh, it could that also be. Yeah. We're trying to find the fish. Oh, the fish was right. Uh, where was that bamboo coral? It was right behind that. Sorry, I was looking. Uh, off from oh. oh, it's there. Yeah. It's there. Where? Um, we just floated out. We, uh, uh, so if it's we just pan south. down a little bit, I'll circle it. There it is. Uh, wait, I missed it. It blends in. It's it's in, in front of that big rock. Yeah, it's by a big rock. Now I can't spot it. So if, if you use that taller stock and go... Right. Uh, oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I 220. <laughs> yeah. An odd angle. Yes. I was going to say, we might also see another one. <laughs> That's the one we are, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You all have really good eyes. Because I, um, I saw it in the coral at first when you said, look at that. And I was like, oh, something's in there. And then it kind of shot out. Could hey, see. push in there for me. It's my LASIK eyes. <laughs> Yeah, that looks like a uh, Chonacops and not a Chonax. So definitely in the family Chonacidae and the genus Chonacops. So is that like uh, what Jake saw when he was driving Hercules? <sighs> uh, it was okay, it's push a, in a bit more. Fish, yeah. It's same family. Cool. I think that was a right. Chonax no, and this is Chonacops because that had more colored patterns. This is like more uniform pink. And that was larger with more spinier Ooh. dorsal fin. It's moving around, stretching its fins. They're so cute. They're very cute. They are cute. And they don't move too far. Yeah, those fins look like, are they kind of more for perching on? Yeah, yeah. They definitely can perch. They can move like uh, very close to the sea floor. It kind of reminds me of like a duck feet, just kind of waddling. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is, are these like also called the frog fishes? I think so. They're okay, all that the frog sense. fishes. Their feet kind of, or their fins kind of look like frog feet, the way they Aww, were moving. Yeah. We have the frog fishes, the bad fishes. Yeah, that was great observation. Thank you. What, what do they, um, what do they eat? These guys, these fish. 
Uh, maybe like smaller crustaceans and shrimps. I can check. I, I that's that would be my guess. Big small mice. Yeah, it's small. There are lots of smaller organisms closer to the sea floor. Uh, smaller crustaceans, gastropods, maybe smaller fishes, larvae. And I will check that. Because these are a kind of angler fishes. Oh, and it has like a like a hole in the back. Or was that to propel? Did you see that? No, Looks like I he's trying to get that, that shrimp that just ran underneath the rock. Yeah. Mm. He's cornering a shrimp right now. Is yeah. he about to grind on shrimp? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they are. Uh, Predators to smaller organisms. Okay, you can go in. Thanks. That is what uh, studies of the stomach content has revealed. That was a great observation. Thank you, everybody. My pleasure. I'm going to just come up a bit. Yeah, I Do you know if these chonocops get um, more pink and reddish as they get older? Sorry, I'm muted. Um, I think the chonocops are generally the reddish pink color. There may be, uh, so I think when they're juvenile, so adults have this red color, mm -hmm. but juveniles have more like a grayish mm. red color. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if the intensity of the red, red increases with age. I wouldn't think so. Generally, fishes have, uh, sometimes can have different breeding colors. So that can be a factor. And sometimes the males and females can have different colors or intensity of colors. Uh, and that changes will be perfect, with breeding seasons. But the juveniles are more grayish pink. Gotcha. And then we have the chonaks, of various kind. They can be orange, pink, <laughs> it sounds and various like colors. Yeah. It sounds like a Pokemon evolution Egg. from chonaks to chonacops. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, push in there for me, please. Would be our first sea cucumber uh, for this watch. That's good. I'm floating, so zoom in anymore. I'll lose it. Yeah, that's that's great. That's great. Thank you. Okay, you can go away. Thank you. Um, just checking to see how many, at least horizontal meters, we are uh, away from waypoint four. I know that this seems like some steep terrain, so it might take us longer. But well, we're following the ridge line here. We are fifty-five meters away. Awesome. Thank you. And I'm um, we're trying. I'm trying to position to go slightly west of where that actual waypoint is, but still over that little mound, because then it kind of sad makes a saddle as you go further south, which means it's like a dip for those who don't know what that means. Right, and the RVs are not, I mean, they can go down, but it's not ideal to go down. We'd rather climb up. Yeah, so right? if you think of like a saddle, literally like a, a Western English horse saddle. You know you're sitting in it. That's what it looks like. And then waypoint five is 569 meters away. And I believe there are nine waypoints in this dive. 
Thank you for that summary, Mia. No problem. Yeah, it's always great to hear about the terrain to have a better idea of the big picture. It's got to go peak on the other side. Can't stand it. We're waiting for the ship. That's my excuse. If I was driving, I'd do the same thing. It's my approach on the beach, looking at all the tide pools. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, my family just leaves me. <laughs> Still haven't figured out which way the wind's blowing here, left or right. Not uh, excessive either way, that's for sure. Down by for me. I'm confused by what sponge this is. can be one of the urated sponges, but honestly, I'm not very sure about the ID. I've seen massive urated sponges, but okay, that looks interesting. A good uh, DSC shot if you're on the... Oh, sorry, I forgot. About my oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Gotta be ready. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot that I had a special power. <laughs> I think it's in the same uh, group as the elephant ears. Elephant sponges? ears, yeah. Oh. That's what I just opened up because and of the uh, this is Goda. because of this hair-like structures at the base. Oh. So this group mm. generally has that finger-like projections that help oh. them attach to the surface. So if you see, uh, what's the most common one? Uh, Hyalonema. They always have these. Uh, very like uh, silicious species, but like silicious fibers made of silica wow. standing out. So I think that uh, can okay. be an indication that it's in the same family. Yeah. And it seems like it could be a, another a great shot. A polio or poliopogons. Look. A kind of a poliopogon. Yeah, can it be. could be. Yeah, because like there's so many here. kinds. Click the yeah. button. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to? Have yes. Uh, okay. And it's a slow click, just so you know. Um, oh, just real clear. Yeah, in order for it to actually save the image, you kind of have to hold it down. Oh. Yeah, okay. just like that. Mm -hmm. nice. Cool. And then that folder right there that you see behind yeah. it is showing you that it's saving the pictures. It's saving, okay. Wow, it kind of reminds me of Bissell threads made from mussels yes, at attachment yes, point. Yes, 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 yeah, absolutely. It's very similar, the structure. And it's uh, like <coughs> zoom in on the little forest on the top there, and then we'll... I saw a tiny little eel worm thing when we were on the side. It just went into the cracks, so not 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 something you could find now, but that's it's interesting. Oh. Little forest of hydroids <laughs> and with a squat lobster gracefully living in there. <laughs> and it's also very very beautiful and interesting view from the top of the sponge. 
where we can see uh, several, we could see several Volteria euplectalids, uh, bamboo coral, vips. That's great. Thank you so much. I think the back row can ag is agreeing on the ID amphidiscosidive. Yes. Can really see the fiber so yeah. well. Wow. Family and probably an, a kind of a polyopogon. It might do these. Yeah, like some of the polyopogons seem to have these fibers yeah, too. Yeah. I think this is a characteristic of yeah. this family. Mm -hmm. You haven't been seeing hyalonemas, and you can s then like it's very beautiful in the hyalonemas because okay, it looks you can like go a small. Get out of here. Thank you. So perching up. Thank you so much. That was a beautiful zoom. side of it now. I'm going to come back to your left. We jumped over just to have a look. Yeah, just call in <coughs> when you're in position and I'll do another 20. All right. We're past the halfway mark for this dive. Um, so just another update for any viewers who are um, tuning in just recently. We are currently looking at Woolard Seamount um, in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. We're about 40 nautical miles north of Kure Atoll um, and okay, close to, to the Northwest Hawaiian Ridge. Um, so this seamount was mapped by RV Falcor in 2014, um, but no previous dives have occurred, so... This is um, our first imagery of this area, and we'll be gather gathering some um, physical samples as well. What'd you get? And um, if we're in a good position, we actually have a question for Mia. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> Mia might have just eaten a cookie, so just <laughs> give her a second. <laughs> Hello. 
<laughs> what are you talking about? I'm not eating in the van. That's against the rules. It's not against the rules. <laughs> um, so our viewer was asking um, some questions about mapping. So um, what sort of mapping do you do during a, the dive? And do you create 3D maps of these seamounts? And can we see them? Yeah, so we so we're not so we're not diving. We are collecting data. Hold on, let me yeah, let me turn off force talk here. Um, we are collecting data with uh, multi beam and sonars. We have a sub bottom sonar, and we get backscatter information. And all of that together does create this beautiful rainbow looking uh, 3D image. And that's how we set up. I know viewers can't see it at home, but we, when we have our dive plans, uh, the dive plans given to um, everyone on the team has a nice view of the seamount we have and then has some lateral views uh, so we can get a sense of what it might, what it, what we expect it to be with the contours, which sometimes lie, um, as we like to joke. And then uh, it will be available at some point. So all this information, except for uh, some of the archaeological stuff, is I think it's kept uh, kind of secret. Um, but otherwise, eventually, this will all be uploaded to um, a public database for people to to access. And when we're not diving, if you want to tune in and watch the screens, it's probably boring for most people, but we are streaming live when we're mapping. So we're, you can watch us as we um, collect the data through the multi-beam and the sub-bottom and the sonar. And it, it's really interesting to see, especially on, uh, I saw this last night in a couple of the other, the past two seamounts, I happened to be there while we were collecting data over our dive sites. And it was just really interesting because you could see how um, compared to the other side of the seamount that we had mapped, they were more collapsed. And uh, it's really just striking because we don't know, nobody has been here to do this type of resolution in terms of mapping. So it's really exciting to, <clears throat> it's like finishing a puzzle, right? We keep going and then you pass again and you pass back over and it's really satisfying to complete that image of those seamounts. So we try to cover all of that area before we dive. And then um, the expedition leaders and Rennie and Derek, uh, who are the lead navigator and mapping coordinators, they'll work with the data that we have to plan out the best dive uh, waypoints um, for us to kind of get information that will best serve the geologist as well as the bi biologist on, on the team and for those on shore who are also requesting uh, certain samples or certain types of geological features or, you know, s different data points to help uh, move science forward. Hopefully that answers that question. Is I went a little long there, so I forget what the actual question was. <laughs> no, that was great. I love the overview of the full process and really emphasizing like how important this mapping is, right? Because we actually don't decide where we're going to dive on fully until we um, get those maps and we can see the topography better. Yeah, the <clears throat> the last few times I feel like it's been almost like last minute, <laughs> like uh, an hour, a couple hours beforehand. I mean, wow. we have an idea, you know, and uh, the team has an idea going in, but sometimes we don't get that last part until a couple hours right before we, we plan to dive and it, you know, can adjust the dive plan once you get that other information. All right, and thank you so much for sharing that while you're also navigating. I really appreciate your ability to multitask. Speaking of that, good for another 20, please. Roger. And I'll put you guys back on bridge nav. Can we please step another two zero at two zero zero? Thank you. I wouldn't say the multi beam lies. I would just say so. It's like looking at a. Uh, 
you know, an old grainy photo versus a, you know, high resolution iPhone 14 photo. Yeah, for <laughs> That's sure. That's a good analogy. So yeah. they're pixels, right? Mm -hmm. And the pixels that Mia has in front of her are uh, either 75 or 100 meter pixels. So then the, uh, the mapping team has to process that data and you know make an image out of a bunch of uh, a bunch of pixels. So there's some interpretation there. There's some filtering and a bunch of other factors that are over my head. But yeah. It's, yeah, it's just we don't have that that resolution when you think about a 100-meter a pixel and a whole bunch of those 100-meter pixels put together. Those are larger, you know, than Nautilus. So when, yeah. we're, when we're down here, we're looking out uh, 50 meters with Hercules and 100 meters with with uh, Atlanta, so we're literally a pixel on that map. Wow. And when I look over it, I tease the navigators sometimes when they're overanalyzing that map. Because, <laughs> you know, I look at it from here, it, to me it looks like I'm a pixel on a map. <laughs> and when I joke about the contours of lies, it's also because we have a whiteboard in our mess that has uh, planning, but we call it the whiteboard of lies. So just as we've gone through this trip, because this is my first ROV cruise, uh, that's why I've been calling these contours contours of lies, because oh. I've been thinking, you know, I'm like, oh, this is what I expect to see. But yeah, because of the resolution, it's not perfect. Totally and, not right. what you see. Yeah. yeah. So it is, it is, but it is what you see. It's just it's, it's what you see way zoomed out. Right, like right. 2,500 meters away, or in this case, you know, 1,800 meters away when you were. Uh, making them out and a lot of people aren't aware of that because I know I was talking to Virginia and I think it was Virginia and she said she was working on stuff and it was like five meter resolution so when I told her what we had been doing she wow. was like whoa I I had no idea so uh, so that's a AUV or yeah, for example a, yeah. if we had a if we had a multi-beam on Hercules which we do have a multi-beam but it's not on at the moment uh, then we get you know we can fill in all of those pixels with hundreds and hundreds of other pixels. So mm -hmm. if you zoom in on uh, Mia's map there, you know, it's yeah, literally a 100 meter pixel or so probably 75 at this depth, I would guess. Awesome. And I, I, ha yeah. I have to jump off for another call, but um, uh, viewers are curious about the AUV. If you could share a little bit about that. Um, have you exploring i'll be back in a second or not a second 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> thanks Tara. we'll be here thank you so i've never worked with an auv i'll let dan answer that if he has and if he's able while we're going around this large rock uh, we're gonna zoom in on some animals here so Thank you. That looks kind of weird. I don't know what that is hanging. The can be the base of a colony. Like oh, there's a chrysogorgid tucked underneath the ledge to the right. Looks like there are a couple of uh, squat lobsters uh, perched on hydroids overgrowing dead coral stalks. There's a beautiful cup coral to the top right. Uh, you want a closer shot of the Chris Gorgia? Uh, sure, that would be great. Thank you. And that would have been a bamboo fan. You'll have to circle it because I can barely say the word and I don't know which one it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to come around here to my... Can you look to the right a little bit for us? It's a beautiful overhang that we have. And Hans is back from his ship to show. It's colder in that studio than it is, is it? in here. Oh. I know that the previous watch was... Uh, seeing some chrysogorgids, but this would be our, our first observation during this watch, I believe. Hmm. Uh, 
Are these little white dots, are those little barnacles? Or they're not hold fast, they're okay, just too tiny. Can, uh, zoom in there. They can be small cup corals, they can be mm. small, like bacterial <laughs> matter. There was a small sea star actually. Mm. And there is zoanthids also growing. Gotta love it. <coughs> yeah, that's a beautiful shot of a chrysogorgia. And it has a shrimp associated with it as well. A couple of shrimps, actually. That's great. Yeah, it's uh, uh, actually kind of criminal. I haven't put the uh, wide-angle stereo camera on here because it's beautiful for this. Oh, uh, you're happy with that? Is yes, that what I'm yes, absolutely. Right. Okay, you can go away, thanks. Thank you. Small uh, yeah, sea anemone. Yeah, everything and just float away. Oh, yeah. Lots of hydroids, some cup corals, a small, a tiny goniastrid sea star. And that large encrusting sponge or holdfast. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hard to tell. So the grass like structure we're seeing on the underneath is the hydroids, right? Yes. I only know those as stinging hydroids in the shallows. Yes, yep. <laughs> having been stung. Many times. Many times. <laughs> so what we try and do for that, Hans, is we usually put on coconut oil, mm. and that works most of the time. So, tip. Before or after you're stung? Before you go swimming, up there, or it almost looks like a large cup coral. So yeah, I think it's probably it's a, a sponge, right? Coral. The white? Yeah. The white is a cup coral. It is? Yes. That's pretty big, no? Yeah, it is a big cup coral because we had a better view when we were looking at wow. it. Uh, hmm. yeah. You could see the grooves in the skeleton. Trying to push in there on the cup coral sponge. <laughs> or the shot. It's a, I don't know if it's a live one or a skeleton. Looks like a skeleton. Yeah, it looks mm -hmm. like a dead cup coral. Wow, yeah, it's pretty big. It is. I'd say it's a skeleton, all right. Mm -hmm. Normally they would have like um, not tentacles, but little yeah, is it yeah. tentacles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, along the edge of the the opening. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. They have a bad habit of being stung. I mean, archaeologists have a bad habit of just putting their hands on things and crawling around anyway, so that's why I've been bitten so many times by eels. They, they you're, like the... You're the, sticking your hands in the holes in the rocks? Well, there are <laughs> scuppers and pipes and all kinds of perfect places on shipwrecks for eels, and so naturally... <laughs> I've never bitten back. <laughs> I'm sure the eels are grateful for that. We have a tiny bowl of soma, some bamboo corals in the background, a large uh, polyopogon. I don't think I quite have the leash to get around there. No, I'm going to come back on the the way we're supposed to be going. Wandering off the reservation there. OK, 
Okay, and for our viewers just tuning in, we are currently diving on Woolard Seamount in the Papahānaumokuākea Marine National Monument, um, which is located northwest of the main Hawaiian Islands. And so far we've seen a lot of um, diverse terrain, and we've also been seeing a lot of... Um, Sorry. Go ahead. <coughs> Talking to myself up here. We have been seeing um, um, some interesting biota as well, so some sponges, some corals. Um, is there any, or maybe Upashana could give a better uh, summary of some of the biology we've been seeing? Yeah, uh, so within the sponges, we have been seeing lots of Volteria sponges and uh, uh, some of the polyopogon sponges, polysomas, uh, but the within the sponges, the Voltarias have been dominating. And the corals, we have been seeing largely different kinds of bamboo corals. Uh, some of them are the unbranched webs. Then we have the sparsely branching bamboo corals and also the uh, fans, the bamboo coral fans. We saw quite a few large primnoid fans, the paracalyptrophora, and some of the smaller uh, primnoid fans as well, which we believe were uh, the Narella species. Uh, there was also a bamboo coral from the I-4 clade. We have seen a few fishes uh, from three different families, the Ophidae uh, form, the, the macrourids, and the other was Ophidiformis from the family Bathididae, and we saw the frogfish, the chonocops, um, and we have seen some cup corals. There was a and there was an observation of uh, a black coral, which we are not sure about the ID. Uh, either was a Lilipathies or a Trisopathies. Um, I think, yeah several crinoids, some uh, actinarians, uh, that's mostly it, a few chrysogorgias, two actually, two or three chrysogorgias, ophiroids, lots of squat lobsters, uh, a couple of sea stars, two sea stars, two, three sea stars because there was a small goniasterid uh, that we noticed, so I think most of that. The distribution has been interesting, you know, and I, I wonder... Move, uh, 20 west, please. I wonder if we see some of that similar pattern I thought we were seeing earlier where certain vertical and uh, underhanging surfaces will have greater diversity and density. Absolutely. Sometimes it seems like the tops of things will be fairly sparse, but on the vertical walls, all of a sudden, you'll have a number of species and related to current flow and food availability, I'm sure. Absolutely, and also we're always looking at one part of a seamount. So, so I think another comparison we should have is which direction or which part of the seamounts we are looking at it and compare that with compared that between seamounts and I'm sure as we if we could go around different directions we'll see different diversities because it's not a consistent diversity or abundance that we see along the seamounts because it is highly patchy and depends on the water current the water flow how the structure of the seamount is altering the water flow so like you said it is highly variable and depends on the location the direction and the structures that we are uh, exploring. At the moment, it's, uh, I don't know if this is a geology term, but we're ridge running with the ROV. So we're, uh, it's pretty unique to be on a structure like this where there's, as you can see at the moment, there's a steep side mm -hmm. on each side and it's really, you know, I don't know how wide that is. Not very wide, a couple ROV widths. Really dramatic. Yeah. 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 I think the widest part here is like 68 meters. Okay. Looking. Well, the part I'm looking at right yeah. now is 
definitely not 68 meters. I mean, yeah. it's a camera width, right? Yeah, there's a more narrow part that's, you know, 20 meters, 10 meters. Lounge, if you're listening, is there a geologist in range down there? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, this is Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hello. Hey. What, what was the question? Thanks, Hannah. We're looking at something that's really, you know, quite prominent and narrow. We're looking at the peak of it and uh, maybe a camera width uh, across. But, uh, you know, it's a very prominent peak, and we're wondering if there was, you know, a geologic term for that. It's, it seems to be too big for a dike, but is, could that be a stack or just a remnant of something else that's collapsed? What you're seeing on the screen is, you know, this, this, uh, this prominent peak. So it could just be um, a lot of lava flows, just sheet flows on top of each other. Uh huh. Yeah. But if anything, if it like fractured at the bottom, so then there would probably be like a cliff side. Two cliff sides. Two cliff sides, Dan says. Yeah, that could be from fracturing, maybe. Yeah. Fra fracturing if, of sheet flows. If yes. you have the high pack computer on the far right side, you can see. Do you see those uh, kind of two points under the ship there? Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Hannah. Thank you, Hannah. A lot of very cool uh, drone footage from uh, the mountains. No problem. Uh, no problem. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Ridge running with drones in, uh, in Hawaii is a big thing. To some insane footage right now. Uh, wow. This yeah. is beyond vertical. Yeah, this is we're now looking at the underside of the What's that? Yeah. Are we now kinda underneath part of the ridge? Uh, no, we're just down on the uh, on the south side of it here. Oh, okay. That's pretty vertical on each side. So we've, we've been kind of following along the top, and then I've just been jumping over on the, on the, on each side. At the moment, it's north-south. It's kind of wandered around a bit. That's a massive sponge. It is a massive uh, sponge. Again, I, I would say right. Poliopogon, both of them were different kinds. And again, just to get a sense of scale, the two green lasers that we see on the screen are exactly 10 centimeters apart, or 4 inches. So comparing it to the sponge we have in view, it's quite, um, quite dramatic. And, um, good for it. Let's turn 20 to the south. And we can also see it in the Atalanta view, looking down on Hercules. 20 south. Um, the sponge is also. 20180. Yeah, there could be at least 15 of those laser lengths across that sponge, which means we're looking at 1.5 meters. 60 inches of sponge. And I had a question, if you're not too sure. busy, of course it can wait. No, I'm good. Okay, so we were just talking about um, how we're following a ridge up, and Upashana had also mentioned that we're only looking at one part of the seamount, so on, on our dives, do you guys ever like circumnavigate a seamount instead of going from the bottom to the top? Has that 
happen, or is there maybe a reason why we don't do that? Uh, we have circumnavigated before. Uh, I haven't uh, with this system. With this system, we typically start deep and, and traverse up the, um, and we try and stay on the on the ridge lines or the high points, obviously, because that's where uh, most of the fauna is. But um, uh, with some other systems, yeah, we've traversed, gone, done on like a corkscrew all the way up. That's okay. in several days worth of uh, mm. diving, and uh, it's uh, a bit more challenging. But with that system, it's a free flyer, so we have more of a, we're not so reliant on the vessel position. We have a, uh, a couple hundred meter excursion uh, circle from the launch point. Here we have, you know, like a 30 meter. Mm. Yeah. I mean, Free flyer, meaning a single, one, just one ROV? Single body, yeah. Okay, yeah. And, and no tether, or it is tethered to the... It it's, uh, flies on an umbilical, so like oh, Sebastian okay. and Ropos are both uh, single body. Okay. And they have, uh, in the case of Ropos, has a, a one-inch wire, and there's, um, oh, I don't know, a dozen to 18 50-pound floats that are put on the wire, so that... Uh, forms a uh, Jason also same with Jason so that for uh, well Jason can do either it's a Lego ROV as well but um, that forms a catenary above the vehicle so the uh, the wire is coming straight off the top of the vehicle up uh, the last floats usually on about a hundred meters up the wire so it basically does kind of a lazy S, and um, you can stretch that S out quite a bit when you're pulling the cable around, so you, you have a lot more latitude to uh, zoom around. Mm -hmm. And because the cable's coming off of the top of the ROV, um, you can use the delta uh, so you pay out more cable, it sinks the back of the catenary, which then, uh, you know, it's not pulling up on the ROV. We can, so we can get the ROV pretty much neutrally buoyant by the delta. The further you get away from the <coughs> vessel, the more you have to kind of pull the cable, but in uh, deep water, it's, yeah, it's easy to get a couple hundred meters away. And uh, you don't have the, since the tether comes out of the top, you can turn the vehicle, you know, 180 either way without uh, getting, there's no tugging on your tail like there is with Hercules. Yeah, interesting. Thank you for that explanation and also for just a description of some of the more, uh, the other systems that are out there. Um, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, pros and cons to both. I've gotten rather used to the uh, second ROV always giving the overview. So the other systems don't have the bird's eye view? Negative, no. They're just, uh, but they typically have uh, better, more cameras on the, on the ROV itself, so you can you know, Hercules is a bit limited on its, you know, view, port, starboard, and aft, and down. So we rely on, on Atalanta for, for that situational awareness. Mm. So more of like multitasking when you're doing the, the free Whereas here it's two different, um, divided into the dual body. Yeah, it allows you, uh, you're more decoupled from the ship as far as, uh, your excursion, your excursion zone.
but you are uh, dragging around that cable. So those those systems have you know twice the horsepower that Hercules has. Yeah, thanks for your explanation, Dan, and we always appreciate it when you take time to explain what you're doing and your experiences um, uh, from your years as an ROV operator. And we do have people interested in, you know, if people are listening and they're interested in possibly pursuing that as a career, I think it's a great opportunity for them to listen and see what you have to say. So thanks for that. Yeah, the industry is um, starving for good technicians and engineers at the moment. All right, students, if yeah, you heard it's that. It's like surfing. Don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, so there are offered uh, internships offered on board. So like Dan said, there's opportunities for you guys out there. If anyone listening is interested, then um, don't wait. Wrapping, if you could turn the the way you came would yeah, be yeah, nice. Yeah. After too much talking, I don't know, That whole left and right, east west thing still kills me. East right, uh, right left, east west, port starboard, port starboard. Yeah. <laughs> Now I'm totally confused. <laughs> There's also two sides to this uh, feature, which is Yeah, it's quite striking. Left, right, forward, back, and up, down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look to your right just a bit for us. And I met a guy once who had a red star tattooed on his right hand. Oh, I know what's killing me. I'm looking at the yellow thing, not the blue dots. Kind of solved that left-right problem for him. But why was it a red star? It was for Polaris, uh -huh. the North Star. He said uh -huh. he could always find his way home. Okay. <laughs> it's actually a, an old sailor's it's thing. It's a sailor tradition, Sailor Jerry, yeah. Yeah, the red star. If you see the Macy's word for the Macy's store with the red star, yeah. that's because the Macy's families came from whalers in New Bedford. Oh, wow. Or Nantucket. I think my favorite Sailor Jerry tradition is tattooing the chicken and a pig on your feet. Oh, that's it's pretty dark. Yeah, because those, those are the boxes that floated. Yeah. So it's helped to keep you afloat. Interesting. Yeah. Or a porter bid. So I'm going to come on the <laughs> other side and uh, turn right, lateral, left. That should be the right direction. In theory. In theory. <laughs> He's not listening to us. <laughs> So, yeah, also we're right on the top. 
can you do a ship move and put Atalanta right over Hercules? Hmm. The only um, like sailors. Whatever it is to put Atalanta over Hercules. Or I don't know if it's actually. Uh, yeah, I've just heard that if the sunset is really red the day before, then it means it will be good weather. I don't know if that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's an old saying. Yeah. Might just be a superstition, but. No, oh, sailors were pretty superstitious. Very. <laughs> no sailing on Friday. Oh, I didn't know that one. Mm. Yep, they'd wait a whole day. All right, uh, no leaving on Sunday uh, or something like that? No leaving for it? One of those. Uh, I could look to this. Didn't we leave on a Friday? <laughs> Let's not point that out. <laughs> but we've had nothing but smooth seas, you know? So. Don't talk, Taylor Ann. <laughs> Keep that in your brain. Uh, superstitions aren't real. <laughs> We're not superstitious, but it doesn't hurt to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> no whistling on board. No so bananas. Probabilistic. I probabilistic. debunked the banana theory. Because it wasn't real. <laughs> <laughs> well, there used to be no women on board either. Oh, yeah. fair point. <laughs> Quiet. But now we're, uh, honestly, yeah, pretty, I think, was really hard, female dominated also now done. on this ship. Uh, you can come down, so. See if you can find a clip. Yeah, who knows if that story about Macy's is true, but you know, the Red Star tattoo is a For fairly the North, North Star. factual. Yeah, you see the Red Star on the compass rose for North, right? We've been seeing that star, right? Have we seen it? Yeah. Polaris, sure. Yeah. yeah. I saw it last night. The sky's really clear. And Andromeda Galaxy. Ken has a couple Sailor Jerry's. Um, um, um. <sighs> Nothing really popping up. Let's um, cancel that move and move south. What did we do on the last one, South? We did 180, yeah. 240. Yeah. Yeah. These are the, how do you, is that Volterra that you're pronouncing? Volterra? Yes. Sponges? Yes. Sounds right, kind of like a... Uh, oh. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'll say it's red sky at night, sailor's delight, red sky in the morning, sailor's warning. Ah, okay, interesting. Can you drop down just a bit more? Yep. Uh, try and light up some. Uh, should do it there. Yep. I was just going to say that Volterra kind of sounds like a rock band name. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> just what it reminds me of. <laughs> I don't know about the current. Not much current, so. 
What's that? There's something pink wedged in the... Oh, there? Oh, so yeah. maybe a fan? Yeah, it's like, a, I think, a small paraboja recruit. A small Coraliate recruit. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I am sure. Absolutely. You beat me to it. <laughs> the section above that looks very squared off, a lot of those stones. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like a step, right? Like from a side. And Hannah and Val were talking about that, and I forget what they said it was. You know, a sheet flow on top of another sheet flow, maybe? that cools at a separate time. I don't know. I guess it's the way it weathers in that square shape. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I think it was Mike and Hannah. Yeah. <coughs> They're explain ex explaining that some areas looked man-made, but they were actually not man-made. Right. Yeah. I messed up there when I <coughs> had you move that way. But um, in the end, it helped to figure out where we were. So uh, our base grade wasn't sure which way to go, but if you put Atlanta over Herc, then I can figure it out and drop down. Uh, but I think basically we're at the end of the uh, it's the end of the ridge line, and we're coming down. Oh, yeah. Looks like a big saddle. Yeah, we're going down into the saddle there. So I was trying to trying to make it easier, but I don't know if I am. No, that's... A lot of times we can't kind of tell till we get there and we get a sonar shot. What the yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're, you can see the hint of... Uh, yeah, you can see the hint of the blue around us there. Yep. So yep. when Jacob dropped down, we just got mm -hmm. some returns there. If we don't know what's around, it's sometimes a cheat to stay right under Atalanta. We don't get the dramatic Herx shots, but uh, as we're coming down, then so where we get wrapped around the axles when Atalanta's shallower than Herc. But if I'm right under it, I can come down and kind of Jake can look down and we can do what we're doing now and we're basically <coughs> backing down the, the cliff and we're watching our uh, aft camera and side cameras. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why we have the high red delta numbers there. 20 some meters. And does that answer your questions? Remember all this stuff I'm telling you. There's no hard and fast, uh, one size fits all. It, like a lot of my answers will be, it depends. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true because there's no, like, it's. It, the, uh, yeah, the conditions change, so you know where one set of parameters is appropriate it, it's not for the next I always say the best way to learn about currents is get caught in a rip yeah I've been caught a couple times very purple okay, okay. You can uh, zoom in there for a sec yeah we have a beautiful purple sea cucumber so if you wanted to, you could step 
Atalanta out behind Hercules. 270 maybe? Uh, no, I think 135-ish. 135, 135. So yeah, if you wanted to put Atalanta out that way, oh, put yeah. us in the deep water off the cliff behind us. Is that right? But, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do that and we'll uh, try 20 and we'll Probably in the family and it's supported a but... Uh, It'll put basically Atlanta where your pointer is. I would still say it's probably a sign of like that. Not if I can't use Atalanta's heading too, yeah, I'll, I'll do this still. one and just do the, uh, if I'm too lazy to do the math, I'll, I'll do that one for a heading. So what do we call? Yeah, so that's what, one three, yeah, one three something, one three five. Okay, purpled out now. Oh wait, 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 what's that? Oh. Shrimp. Oh. Shrimp. Squat lobster. <laughs> Doing some recreational okay, leaping. <laughs> wow. Tiny. Tiny, absolutely. That was a little. Yeah, which is in front of or behind Atlanta. So. Right? Right. Yeah. Because we're coming down. Yeah, that's the cliff behind us. So we're, we're coming down now. So I'm turned around looking north, backing down. And Jacob is looking south. So. Um, I actually want you to come up just a bit now. Deltas, I stopped there. Yeah, eventually, so we're trying to put you out behind Hercules. But that's difficult because Hercules keeps moving. <laughs> I can go sideways for a while, find something to look at. Welcome back, Kara. Thanks. Jumping in for the last like 15 minutes of this dive. Um, Upasana, I feel like you've been giving these really great like dive summaries so far. Um, and we had someone kind of asking, you know, where we are, what's going on. So it'd be great to give an update. Um, we're currently in Papahanaumo Kuakea Marine National Monument. And would you like to share Pusha Oop, sorry, Upasana, what we've been finding? Yeah, so for today's dive, we are on the Vulaut Seamount, and we have been gradually making our way up along the Seamount, and uh, there has been an interesting diversity of organisms uh, and some patterns in distribution that we have been observing. Uh, so in terms of corals, we have seen quite a lot of bamboo corals. Uh, some of them are the vips. Then we have the nodal branching colonies, the uh, internodal branching colonies. Uh, we have the sparsely branched bamboo corals. Uh, then there is some magnificent primnoid paracalyptrophora fans and what we think of some Nerella fans as well. A uh, few chrysogorgias. Uh, 
then uh, hydroids, and then we have been seeing uh, some crinoids, and we saw just a first sea cucumber for our watch, uh, like a couple of minutes ago. Um, then a few sea stars. Then we have seen we have been seeing uh, some interesting fishes, including a frogfish or a chonocops. Uh, there were there have been some sponges, lots of Voltaria sponges. The bolosomas, uh, the different kinds of polyopogon sponges. Um, we've also seen a few uh, actinarians, and interesting, interestingly enough, we are again zooming in on our second sea cucumber. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> This yeah, one's that pretty one with the purple, yeah. purple color. <coughs> it looks kind of fuzzy too. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll hang out for a minute and see what happens. You can uh, push in there on the. I would say purple head, but I don't know if that's appropriate. Well, it looks so. Those are the two feet, you think, or yeah, the, the just extensions the of the body from uh, above the body. Yeah, those like are just extensions. The extensions. Yeah. The feet would be underneath, and right. so I'm currently confused between two that look very similar. One is a cynalactid in the genus Palopatides, and then there's the other one. Uh, which looks like uh, CF means it looks like the Hansenoturia. So it's either one of those, but these two images that I have for reference are very similar. This and this. And there's like other images also I expect to answer. So it is definitely a holotherian. I'm going to go with the Hansenoturia. Okay. Because I know uh, yeah. nothing about biology. <laughs> Did you say Hans there? <laughs> like Hans the sea cucumber, basically? It was a Hans and not there yet. <laughs> so now we have... So we have a Hans in holoturia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is it anchored by the purple bit? And is the rest floating? Or is that an optical delusion on my part? No, the rest of the part is not floating. It has two feet all along the bottom part of it. Uh, they're just but translucent. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're just translucent and under the body, but the purple is the mouth, so they have like the feeding parts there as well. So it looks more like a suction cup that's attached onto the surface, but it's like not like that. Mm -hmm. And so, as well as the biology, we've been seeing some dramatic underwater volcanic topography. Well, yeah. Because you know, the mission to understand these places is geological as well. The the seamounts are undersea volcanoes generated from um, plumes, magma plumes in the distant distant past, and so there are a number of different features we see in this volcanic terrain, different types of sheet flows, like lobate flows. So there, I think the previous watch saw some pillow lava formations, um, some slower extrusions of volcanism. Um, so it's been a rather fascinating top topography, and. Yeah, that's on the awesome. seamount as well. Yeah, I see some <coughs> comments about um, appreciating the amazing geography, or sorry, geology <laughs> that we're seeing. Um, so thanks everyone for tuning in. And if we have time for uh, one more question, Upasana. So a viewer was asking, does day and night make any difference for the residents down this deep? So I know we kind of talked about circadian rhythms with okay, coral spawning before. Is there anything else? Or really, not so much. No, it's because like we start Can you, uh, by bring your head around to one three five, please. By two hundred meters depth, we lose all lights, so it's always dark mm. at these depths. So Other day way. and night, as such, in terms of availability of light, does not matter. But on a larger picture, there can be some implications because the day and light. Uh, matters in the upper layers of the ocean so that in turn determines the amount of organic material that uh, gradually reaches the deeper depths one, of three, the five. ocean and also oh, sorry, there three, are one, certain psychiatric rhythms and biological the clocks associated one, evolutionarily that's not directly related to day and night but we can right. there's some rhythm that plays it yes. and maybe the diol vertical migration yeah. can affect it so yeah. that's like a migration of creatures that happens um, each day and night. Yeah. 
That so. can basically affect the amount of food and then the yeah. of time the main snow is sinking. But right. I guess by the time it reaches a certain depth, it kind of diffuses. Mm, gotcha. But, uh, also, I don't think we know enough to rule right. out right, these right. possibilities. All right. Well, thanks. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah, day and night also has very little influence on us as well. <laughs> We're not sure what day it is or what time it is. These are 24-hour watches that we yes. run. I don't know what day it is, what date it is, and what time it is. Yep. <laughs> Can you uh, re home the DBL now, please? Yeah, for the moment, uh, we should hit the bottom here soon. Let's try, uh, let's try move to the south now. See what happens. Yeah, twenty. Please. And we had a viewer um, shout out to Mia earlier for sharing her mapping knowledge. So, thanks again, Mia. I know I've asked you maybe the same question a couple times now. So, thank you for also. Um, helping to <clears throat> answer for all our uh, viewers tuning in at different times. Thanks, Kara. I was trying to listen as I, I was just calling to the bridge, but I think you paid me a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry, I can um, tell you again later, but basically they were appreciative of your mapping knowledge and I'm appreciative of you sharing uh, the uh, kind of similar knowledge it, um, over again if we have viewers coming in at different times asking the same thing. No, it's fine. And actually, it's getting easier to explain. Uh, so it's good to be asked over and over. And I love hearing all your biology stuff. And I love hearing about, you know, all the cultural significance and, ho and being in the sacred space and what it means for uh, Jake and Jaina and taking samples. So I love when you all share and Hans and his archaeology. <laughs> He's a budding biologist. Yeah. <laughs> and photographer. <laughs> and a standard geologist. <laughs> and scuba diver. <laughs> Easy now, people. Easy. <laughs> oh, Pashana, was that a dead um, fer Feridi? Feridi? Uh, the one that was on the floor? With the weird texture. Yeah, yeah. that was a Feridi, probably in the genus Aspidoscopulia. That did look strange. <laughs> in your opinion, in your expert opinion? Yes. <laughs> look down, just a little for me, so I can see underneath her a little more. So we're coming down, I want to have more of the... You can look down with the camera a little more. Yeah, cheers. And it's again one of the very beautiful uh, bamboo corals, uh, the keratitis or keratitidine in the I4 clay. Uh, keratitidine is the subfamily, and we had just seen one of these before. So 
again. It's a magnificent observation, and I'm always uh, enthralled by their branching pattern that we have. Thank you so much. And just wanted to jump in for a quick second uh, to let our viewers know that um, the footage from our um, Battle of Midway dives is now available um, for each uh, aircraft carrier as well as a there. summary video, I believe. Um, so feel free to check that out. And we also have um, a recap of that uh, previous dive that had so many pink corals and creatures. Um, so that video recap of that dive is available and the adorable transparent pleurobrank we saw in our first dive. So if you haven't seen those already, definitely take a look. All right, it's uh, just a few minutes left in the afternoon watch, and the dog watch folks are coming in. Yeah, we are almost at the end of our <coughs> watch and getting ready to switch over to the next watch. And it has been a great uh, watch as always, and a pleasure to work with everybody. And looking forward to our next watch again. Thank you so much, everybody, and especially the scientists on shore as well. Yep. Thanks, Thank everyone. And Thanks, th front row. Thanks to all our viewers for tuning in and exploring with us as well. Um, we always love hearing your questions and comments and stories, so um, definitely share with us in the chat and we'll try to get to it when we can. Um, I'll be passing this off to Tori, um, so have a great rest of this dive and see you on the next one. Thanks, Kara. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to be passing this on to Derek. Bridge RV 20180, please. Hello everyone, can you all hear me okay? It sounds like it. 
We've got the 4 to 8 watch coming in and getting settled. Give us a few moments and then we'll start with some introductions. Okay, it looks like we're all plugged in. Yeah? Okay. Well, if that's the case, then we can... Oh. Okay. That's true. Well, while we wait for Drake, I guess we can just start some introductions yeah, we back here. All right. Well, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tori Hunt. I am the science communicator sitting on the 4 to 8 watch. Um, this is my very first time ever sailing on a research vessel, first time sailing on Nautilus, and I am a high school science teacher from North Carolina um, when I'm not here. So, so excited to be here, um, and I figured we could talk about, I don't know, our pets. I know we've shared a little bit with each other uh -huh. about some of our little friends and like shown pictures, but I have one pet, it's a cat, and her name is Dinky. Dinky. Dinky, Cute. yes. What color is your cat? Um, brown. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> brown. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Okay, while I try and find a picture, Lilia, do you want to share? I know sure. you've got a really cute dog. I have such a cute dog, which is actually not my dog. <laughs> um, it's my daughter's dog, but somehow that happens. So, aloha, everybody. Aloha, um, awinala. It is afternoon in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Um, my name is Malia Evans. Um, on board the Nautilus, I am serving as the resource monitor and also an educator. Um, when I'm on land, I work for Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument um, in education and outreach. So um, yes, I do have a beautiful English bulldog um, who is a diva. She thinks she's a human. Her name is Lao Lao. My daughter likes to name her uh, animals after food. So those of you familiar with Hawaiian culture will know what Lao Lao My is. It's like pork and fish and uh, wrapped up in uh, taro leaves and then steamed. Um, it's such a good, delicious meal. And um, yeah, so her name is Lao Lao and she is just the cutest. Uh, cutest four-year-old female I've ever seen. Oh, I know Aww. yesterday when we were looking, was that yesterday? Chana 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 Cops. Cops. <laughs> she looks like a Chana Cops. Oh, yeah. like <laughs> that bottom lip, you know, it just hangs out like... <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> she totally, that could be the, the counterpart for her mm -hmm. in the ocean. It's a Chana Cops. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Awesome. Mike, what about you? Yeah, Mike Brennan. I'm a maritime archaeologist with Search Inc. I'm a co-lead scientist for this expedition and a watch leader for the 48 Watch. Um, I have a eight-year-old Shiba Inu dog named Loki, who is uh, has a lot of attitude, but he's very sweet, and uh, he's he's uh, unusually colored black, white, and brown. I've seen a picture. Yeah. Super cute. I love that. Hannah. Hi, I'm Hannah Parody. I am part of the science team as a geologist. I am a graduate student at CSULB, and I have a dog and two cats. So my dog's name is Rosie, and she's a Pyrenees and Lab mix, and she's very sassy. She <laughs> loves to give side eye. <laughs> it's really funny. and um, Actually, <laughs> so she's she's hilarious. Um, she's very uh, extroverted. She loves other dogs. Um, she loves going to the park and meeting everybody. Aww. And then also I have two cats. 
Einstein and Einstein. Coraline. Einstein. I always wanted a cat named Einstein. And so when we finally got a cat, I was like, Einstein. And he looks like a little alien. It's it's hilarious. He's so weird. Looks He's like so weird. Alien. Now I have he to does. see a picture. Why? I will show a picture. Does. Well, you didn't even Einstein, so. Yeah, he it fits him so well. <laughs> and then Coraline, she's a little, <laughs> she does not move. Like, she just stays on my sister's bed. Like, she has an attachment to my sister. Oh. And she actually gets, like, really upset when my sister goes to college. She'll, mm -hmm. like, she'll, Ready. like <laughs> she'll, yeah. she'll, just, she'll get no, so, so mad. Give me a reset, too. Whenever. But she's black. She's a black cat. And she looks like one of the ones that have, like, big eyes. And, um, yeah, she's so cute. She's so cute. But she's also, like, She's really mean to the dog. That's another thing. My dog grew up with the cats, so my dog like plays like a cat with other dogs. Oh, and funny. so when my dog like goes to the dog park, she'll like slap, like hit the other cats, like bat them like other a dogs. cat. Yeah, other dogs. That's and it's funny. so funny because they have like, no what? idea. Yeah, they're like, what? What are you doing? <laughs> it's so funny. You don't play like a normal dog. No. No. <laughs> it was so. Uh, and the owners will come up to me and they're like, uh. How did and I'm like, sh I'm sorry. She she was raised by cats. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. Okay. I'll get a picture of Einstein though. In the meantime, I have a great photo of him. Sebastian. Hi everyone. I'm Sebastian. Uh, can't, can't hear you. Hear I can't you. hear you. Talk to SPL. There you oh, go. there we go. Someone turned it off. All right. Uh, <laughs> my name is Sebastian Martinez. Um, I am a dialoguer here on the Nautilus from University of Hawaii at Manila. Um, I don't have my own dog, but my mo I kind of count my mom's dog as my dog. Um, he, his name is Winston. He is a three-pound, seven-year-old Pomeranian. Oh my gosh! With an attitude. Well, he doesn't have an attitude. He's very, very sweet, but he's unfortunately way too smart for his own good. He knows how to be cute in a way to get what he wants. <laughs> like he purposely tilts his head. He purposely has his tongue out, mm -hmm. and he knows how to work the room. <laughs> um, I love yeah, he's a Winston. little he's a little spoiled brat, but I love him. <laughs> <laughs> she, he does have it's really she's they're really cute. Yeah, they're really cute. Hannah, was that a picture of Einstein? Yeah, it look, and here's be. a great video. This is him. This is how he sits. That's Einstein. Yeah. Oh. Orange cat. Orange cat. Really yeah. orange cat behavior. Um, and this is my dog. This is my dog, terrified, terrified of the cats <laughs> behind her. Because <laughs> she's so scared that they're going to hit her. Oh, wait. sweetie. Oh, wait. Okay, wait. Oh, oh I guess I don't show the cats. Hold on. Oh. But here's, here's Coraline. And <laughs> she, she is so funny. <laughs> Big yellow. Oh, yeah. so sweet. I love them. What There's about our front row? Can we have some introductions and hear about any pets? Uh, sure, yeah. This is Derek uh, Sowers. Uh, I work for the Ocean Exploration Trust as Mapping Operations Manager. I'm doing the nav watch on this, this uh, portion of the dive. And I have an Australian Shepherd at home who's about two and a half and super oh. cute. Big ball of energy, kind of a wild, wild man. He'll take as much physical activity as you can give him. Um, <laughs> So he stares at me when I'm at home working on the computer and just like, all right, let's go outside. Um, so it keeps me, gives me some breaks, gets me running and trying to, trying to tire him out. And he loves to play soccer. He's a really good soccer player. Aww, soccer. So this is a pretty big uh, yeah. fish. What's the dog's name? Coda. Coda. Aww. Yeah, he's a kitty. That reminds me of Brother Bear. <laughs> <laughs> can we get a zoom in when we get a chance? Yeah, he's a tricolor. Uh, Aussie, he's really cute looking. But he's very protective, like, he doesn't really trust yep, you until he gets to know you a bit. Holding. Mm. Oh, this is a big rat tail. Boom, size. Sebastian, one time I remember you saying something about, like, uh, their color telling you about how healthy they are, like if they're shiny looking. Was that about rat tails? Um, yeah, for most fish, the more kind of like shiny and slimier they look, the <laughs> usually the more healthier they are. Because okay. it usually means that they're producing a nice slime on their outer, um, on their skin scales, which mm -hmm. helps them keep parasites away and whatnot, keep them, give them a nice shiny look. 
Um, so you can tell a fish's health just by looking at it, if it's super shiny and super, like, um, unblemished, you know? We have not seen any hagfish. Are we too far south for those? Um, I think, think hagfish are almost the coast cosmopolitan, I believe. Yeah, we saw them a lot over uh, in Southern California. I think um, it just depends, like, we're, we're, if we were to be near a whale, uh, a whale fall, I think we might see them. It just kind of depends on what, uh, you know, what we come across that they might be feeding on. They kind of come out of nowhere when, when st something comes by. Oh, wait a minute, actually, yeah. I'm looking up, oh no, that's for the Pacific hagfish, but that still should apply. Um, distribution. I've seen them before, but it like... Occurs in the eastern oh. North Pacific from Canada to Mexico. Yeah. So it should be in the range. Well, we're not really eastern. Oh, true. We're central, so... I forget that sometimes. Maybe not. Eastern, yeah. So it might be out of the range. But I, I, I do think it's pretty, they're opportunistic, so I think, yeah, they, they have a slime on them that really stinks. Yeah, you don't want to touch a hagfish. <laughs> it was uh, you saying slimy that reminded me of them. Yeah. <laughs> There's a really cool highlight video of the one, like, tying itself in a knot. I love showing yeah, that Yeah, they do that all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they do that to make more slime. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I know an ROV pilot who gets so grossed out well, by I, them and they have to leave the van. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think they tie themselves in a knot to get, like, pull. Like to like the torsion actually gives them torque on the on what they're trying to eat. Uh, they usually do it just solo, like not when they're eating anything. Oh. See that behavior all the time. Okay. Oh, um, that fish. Is there a fish that we just went by? Down in that cave, or uh, this? Chris Kelly saying that something about fish that he does not know. Well, we saw the rat tail. But it wasn't that rat tail, right, Chris? Then there was an eel that swam by after that. I did not see the eel. Um, so we're now in this saddle. Uh, it, I'll make a note. Is this stuff, Hannah, that you would want to sample? I think you muted him. There That's what I was, I was looking at it, and I was like, a lot of it looks like it's cemented together. Yeah. I mean, that's well, free. That's free, but that's I don't free, know. That's free, I think. That's really funny. Um, well, maybe, maybe when we start coming up the next slope. Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll stand by. Uh, I, I, I'm, I don't. Okay. Die. Yeah, so Jake, it's your turn. I intro and pet. Yeah, I have two cats at home, Doja Cat and <laughs> Bernadette. <laughs> and uh, they're both, uh, well, one of them's two years old, Approaching two years old, and the other one's a year old, so still oh, yeah. kittens. Yeah, so still little. Cute. A lot, very playful, Babies. very fun. Um, yeah. Do they get along with one another? They do. They fight and wrestle all the time. <laughs> In a fun way. In yeah. Fun way. Also, how's your coffee? The coffee was great. Yeah. I, I convinced him to use the one in the lounge. Yeah, that was a that was out a, forward. Yeah. Good yeah. call there. I got it yesterday, and it was very easy. Yeah. No, I should have gone before. All right, Please thanks, do Jake. do a ship move zero two zero meters at bearing one nine zero. Uh, how about Tito? Same speed, zero point two knots. Well, hey, Tito here in the front row, uh, driving Atalanta um, from Woods Hole. Uh, my best friend is a seventy-five pound boxer named oh. Sam. Oh wow, <laughs> he boxers is, uh, are awesome. Third boxer, uh, six years old. He's either going 100 miles an hour or snoozing. Aww. Yeah, that's his MO. Keeps me so active. Uh, he goes to work with me whenever I can, which uh, I can't believe how lucky I am to work at Woods Hole, where we can bring yep. our pets into work. work. Work dogs are the best. No, oh, it's amazing how many dogs actually go to work yeah. there. But, uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, he is uh, the light of my life. No. Don't tell my kids I said that. <laughs> We had friends who had a young family, and they had a boxer, and the, they would have, like, their two-year-old sleeping on the floor, and the boxer would just kind of curl up next to the kid and put one paw over the kid, just, like, in a protective Aww. manner. No, he is amazing. Sweetest dog ever. Like I said.